Well, I want to welcome everyone back to our homework video solutions here as we take a look at IPv6 troubleshooting. In this homework assignment, we have trouble ticket two, R1 should match the, R1 should match the attached exhibit A. That rhymes, so I'm having trouble saying it. So R1 should match the attached exhibit A. We know this is a technique that Cisco will use quite a bit with trouble tickets. They'll have us match particular output. These are a really easy way for proctors to create problems for us, and they can be an interesting and challenging thing for us to tackle. So what I want to talk about first here is the strategy that I use, the quick fire strategy that I use and the thought process I go through, just looking at the ticket. Yeah, there's a lot that we want to look at, right? R1 should match this output and notice it's a show IPv6 route. So my eyes immediately go here. This is OSPF version three that we are dealing with. Obviously it could be a layer one or layer two issue that we got to deal with kind of thing, but we can immediately make some assumptions about what we're going to face. I take, a, I take note of the IP addressing, I take note of R1, R5, and R4 being the devices in the scope. And now I go ahead and take a more detailed look at the exhibit. The exhibit, once again, does show us that show IPv6 route output. We can see a connected route, a link local route, two OSPF routes, and look at what we can learn from them that we're supposed to see on our device it would appear we're supposed to see a prefix that appears to be the loopback prefix, I would guess, on R4, the loopback prefix on R5. Now, there's some additional output below, but it turns out you don't even need to see that because it is not going to be important here. So, this is the exhibit output that we're supposed to match. Obviously, our quick fire strategy says, let's verify the ticket actually exists. It only takes a moment and it can be very important, especially if you've solved some things that you found in the topology. You may have literally gotten two birds with one stone if you fixed a couple of things in one ticket that may have actually impacted another ticket. This is rare since Cisco wants to make tickets independent, but you never know. It's worth checking to make sure that we do indeed have an issue, and sure enough, we do. Look at this. We have one OSPF learned route, and it's for the loopback prefix we assume of R5. R4s is not in there. What's really interesting about this particular ticket is that the link between R4 and R5 is in there. Hmm. So we are learning information via OSPF for, uh, about R5, and we're learning information from OSPF about the link between R5 and R4. So we've got a pretty good idea here of where our problem scope is. Now, I don't like this at all. Cisco's laughing at, the, at us. Look at this, LOL. They're laughing out loud at us. That's really aggravating me. I'm going to get this ticket right, and I'm going to do it really quickly. How dare they laugh at me? Okay, so let me just go ahead and bring you back real quickly here to our diagram. And so again, we go to R1, and we see what appears to be the loopback prefix of R5. And we also see this particular circuit advertised in OSPF. What we're missing is the prefix we believe is assigned to loopback on R4. Notice we go through a lot of logic here before we even hit the command line after verifying that we do have a problem. Quickfire has us run right to the destination device, in this case R4, and I'll do a show IPv6 interface brief. Here with this output, we see that Oh, well, gee, okay, the loopback prefix that we're supposed to be seeing is indeed up, up. Oh, I bet you I know what the problem is. Show, run, interface, loopback, zero. I bet you OSPF isn't enabled properly. Uh-oh, it is. 
In fact, let me now bail out to a, well, are we truly neighboring? Uh, let's see, show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Ah, look at this. So everything is fine with the adjacency between R4 and R5. I think I'm going to go ahead and just do a show run at this point, and I'm going to look for anything that may be filtering. Yeah, I want to go ahead and look for any filters that might be in place. So there's, you know, now we're really shooting up that OSI stack, aren't we? Okay, there's a loop back. That all looks good. And then we're going to see the OSPF configuration here. And yeah, the OSPF configuration doesn't need anything fancy. Uh, let's see. If I go over to R5, this is one hop closer to the R1, and do a show IPv6 route, Uh, look at this. R5 isn't learning anything from an OSPF perspective. Show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Uh, wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. Look at what we just kind of accidentally discovered. We've got two OSPF devices here with the same router IDs. Wow. We just kind of accidentally discovered it. Gotta love when that happens. With my particular troubleshooting logic, I bumped right into an issue. Well, who's right and who's wrong? If I go over to uh, R4 and do a show IPv6 OSPF, we see the router ID is the 32-bit value 192144. This is R4. If I go over to R1 and run that same command, we see, aha, the router ID is misconfigured over here. Now, the misconfiguration is pretty obvious, right? Because that's an IP address that exists on R4. This is an example where I'm going to have no problem removing a command. Yeah, this is an example where I have no problem removing a command because that's an IP address that exists on R4. That's just plain wrong. If you were afraid to remove this command, an alternate solution approach would be to modify the router ID on R4, right? But here we can see that it's just plain wrong. I have no problem taking it out. So I'm going to do IPv6 router OSPF. Uh, wait a minute, I'm being silly here. Do show run begin router IPv6. Uh, IPv6 router. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I'm not taking the actual exam right now. I've gone a bit brain dead. Okay, and sure enough, there is the offending command. So I say IPv6 router OSPF1, no, paste, and now, of course, it says you need to clear IPv6 OSPF process. We say yes. Notice console logging. Darn Cisco has turned that off so we don't see anything at the console, but that's okay, really, because what I need to do now is show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. We can see we're in the two-way state with our druther up arrow. And now is a time where I'll actually just sit here and waste a few seconds. I don't really, I'm not going to have enough time here to bounce around and do a bunch of other stuff. So I'll just go ahead and sit here and wait for this to reestablish. If it started taking any unusual amount of time, uh, there's X start then I would go and do something else. There's our full state, and we can do our show IPv6 route, and voila. Uh, sorry to butcher French there. But uh, anyways, there is the exhibit output that we expected to see. Wow. So a pretty simple ticket resolution once we isolated it. And the isolation can be a bit tricky there, but when it all comes together, 
our initial analysis of what's going on, and then we engage in our quick fire troubleshooting approach. We quickly see no matter how bizarre Cisco gets with us, in this case, a misconfigured router ID, we should be able to isolate and then remediate the ticket in plenty of time. Well, thanks for joining me, and I do believe we'll be back soon with a third trouble ticket.